Distance education has strong appeal to adult learners who are looking for a flexible, convenient form of learning that they can combine with work and home responsibilities. Distance education can be expected to grow as the demands for skill upgrading and for knowledge acquisition increase. At the same time, the goal for lifelong learning continues to permeate the adult learning environment and there is increased recognition that continued adult learning is necessary to adequately meet the challenges of the 21st century. This video will discuss the current landscape of distance education and lifelong learning in Canada. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. What types of distance education are evident in Canada today? What is the history of distance education in Canada and what is the current status of distance education today? How have the Hamburg Declaration of Adult Learning and Learn Canada 2020 impacted lifelong learning in Canada today? And are the goals of lifelong learning in Canada being achieved? According to Taylor, there are five generations of distance education. The first is correspondence education, which is characterized by the predominant use of a single technology and makes heavy use of standardized textbooks and print material. The second is integrative use of multiple one-way media, such as print, broadcasting, or recorded media, such as video cassettes. This type of distance education is characterized by a deliberately integrated multimedia approach with learning materials specifically designed for study at a distance, such as correspondence text combined with standard textbooks and collections of readings from academic journals and supported by television and or radio programming. The third is two-way synchronous telelearning using audio or video conferencing. This type of distance education is based on replicating as far as possible the classroom model through the use of synchronous interactive technologies such as video conferencing and relies heavily on lecturing and questions. The fourth is flexible learning based on asynchronous online learning combined with online interactive multimedia. This type of distance education is based on asynchronous communication through the internet, which enables increased student-teacher and student-student interaction at a distance. The final is intelligent flexible learning, which adds a high degree of automation and student control to asynchronous online learning and interactive multimedia. This type of distance education is still experimental and is based on heavy automation of learning. The progression through these stages of development has been driven mainly by changes in technology and educational theory. Bates identified six main types of distance teaching organizations. Public autonomous distance education institutions, dual mode institutions, for-profit distance education institutions, partnerships and consortia, workplace training organizations, and virtual schools. Distance education in Canada originated from the educational needs of populations living far from urban centres. Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario was the first to offer correspondence courses in 1889 with the help of the Canadian Northwest Mounted Police who delivered course material in areas where postal service was not existent. In 1907, distance education courses were introduced by the University of Alberta and soon after several institutions opted for distance education to serve populations living away from major centres of learning. The growth of distance education continued in Canada with the adoption of distance education by Memorial University in 1967 and at the University of Waterloo in 1968. A major landmark in the history of distance education in Canada was the establishment of Athabasca University in 1972. Athabasca was Canada's first open university and also the first autonomous distance education institution to be set up in Canada. Also in 1972, the Tallinn University in Quebec introduced distance education programs and the momentum caught on and there were many more players in the field by the 1990s. Today Canada has six academic institutions which have a significant strategic focus on distance education and online learning. These are Royal Roads University in BC, Thompson River University also in BC, Athabasca University in Alberta, Memorial University in Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as two institutions in Quebec. There are also multiple dual-mode institutions offering both classroom-based learning and distance education to create greater flexibility for students. One strategy being pursued by both colleges and universities across the country is to increase non-resident enrollment, especially from international students, as all provincial fee regulations permit international students to be charged a higher fee for study at a Canadian university or college. Currently, no reliable systematic data exists for the number of students studying online in Canada, However, it's been estimated that there are between 875,000 and 950,000 registered online students in Canada at college and universities studying a purely online course at any one time. 
There are also significant developments outside of formal academic institutions, including the adoption of distance and online learning by corporations and private providers of vocational education, and the adoption of distance and online learning by the Government of Canada, especially for its military and the professional development of the public sector. There are several current barriers to the development of distance education in Canada. Access to broadband, especially for content-rich online courses which use multimedia resources, is a prerequisite for many distance education courses and programs. While the majority of the population in Canada is well served by commercial broadband providers, certain areas of rural Canada and northern regions do not have broadband service or reliable affordable service. There is also a growing population of those unable to afford access to computers, smartphones, or mobile technology often needed to participate in distance education. Until recently, many institutions saw distance or online learning as an adjunct to their core business, rather than core to their strategic growth and development. This is now changing with more colleges and universities seeing distance education as critical for the development. Some have also suggested that the lack of federal presence in education is an impediment to a coordinated strategy for the future of distance and online learning. It is also seen as an impediment to such things as a national system for quality assurance or a national credit transfer system. As mentioned in previous videos, recent economic, cultural, and social transformations in most industrialized societies have led to the recognition that lifelong learning is necessary to adequately meet the challenges of the 21st century. Adult learning has grown in depth and scale and has become an imperative at the workplace, in the home, and in the community, as adults struggle to create new realities at every stage of life. Adult education plays an essential and distinct role in equipping adults to respond productively to the constantly changing world and to provide learning which acknowledges the rights and responsibilities of the adult and the community. In 1997, the Hamburg Declaration on Adult Learning was an outcome document of the 5th International Conference on Adult Education. More than 1,500 delegates at the UNESCO conference agreed upon a 27-point Declaration of Adult Learning, which called upon all member nations to develop educational systems that provided accessible opportunities for people to learn throughout their lives. The Declaration considers adult education as more than a right. It's a key to the 21st century. It's both a consequence of academic citizenship and a condition for full participation in society. In Hamburg, the broad and complex spectrum of adult learning was considered under 10 thematic headings. Adult learning and democracy, the challenges of the 21st century. Improving the conditions and quality of adult learning. Ensuring the universal right to literacy and basic education. Adult learning, gender equality and equity and the empowerment of women. Adult learning in the changing world of work. Adult learning in relation to the environment, health and population. Adult learning, culture, media, and new information technologies. Adult learning for all, the rights and aspirations of different groups. The economics of adult learning, and enhancing international cooperation and solidarity. In 2008, the Provincial and Territorial Ministers of Education, through the Council of Ministers of Education Canada, introduced the Learn Canada 2020 framework, which was developed to enhance Canada's education systems, learning opportunities, and overall education outcomes. The vision of LEARN 2020 is quality lifelong learning opportunities for all Canadians. LEARN Canada 2020 encompasses four pillars of lifelong early, from early childhood to adulthood, and addresses the most pressing education and learning issues facing Canadians today. The first pillar is early childhood learning and development, which states that all children should have access to high quality early childhood education that ensures that they arrive at school ready to learn. The second pillar is elementary to high school systems, where all children in our elementary to high school systems deserve teaching and learning opportunities that are inclusive and that provide them with, with world-class skills in literacy, numeracy, and science. Post-secondary education is the third pillar, and Canada must increase the number of students pursuing post-secondary education by increasing the quality and accessibility of post-secondary education. The final pillar is adult learning and skills development. And Canada must develop an accessible, diversified, and integrated system of adult learning and skills development that delivers training when Canadians need it. Within the four pillars of lifelong learning, the ministers identified eight specific activity areas and accompanying objectives. The first activity area is literacy, and the objective is to raise the literacy levels of Canadians. The second is Aboriginal education, and the goal is to eliminate the gap in academic achievement and graduation rates between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal students. The third is post-secondary capacity, and the goal is to enhance and stabilize the long-term capacity of post-secondary systems to meet the training and learning needs of all Canadians, 
seeking higher learning opportunities. The fourth is education for sustainable development, and the goal is to raise students' awareness and encourage them to be actively engaged in working for sustainable society. The fifth is international and national representation, and the goal is to speak effectively and consistently for education and learning in Canada in both pan-Canadian and international settings. The sixth is official languages, and the goal is to, is to promote and implement support programs for minority language education and second language programs that are among the most comprehensive in the world. The seventh is learning assessment programs and performance indicators, and the goal is to support the implementation of national and international learning assessment programs and performance indicators for education systems. And the final is education data and research strategy, the goal of which is to create a comprehensive, long-term strategy to collect, analyze, and disseminate nationally and internationally comparable data and research. While the commitment to lifelong learning expressed by the provincial and territorial ministers of education is publicly evidenced in white papers and policy statements, the move toward implementation of these policy statements is not as evident. A recent report by the Canadian Council on Learning revealed that despite widespread agreement on the importance of and need for skills, knowledge, and education, Canada has yet to develop a comprehensive plan for fostering a lifelong learning society. In addition, a large proportion, almost 42% of Canadian adults, or about 9 million, have low levels of literacy and perform below the internationally accepted minimum considered necessary for participation in a knowledge society. Moreover, out of 30 OECD countries, Canada is the only country that does not have a formal post-secondary accreditation system of programs and post-secondary institutions. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. Is there a need for greater distance education opportunities in Canada? And if so, how might Canada meet this need? How can we overcome some of the distance education barriers in Canada? Is Canada meeting the objectives of the Hamburg Declaration on Adult Learning and Learn Canada 2020? And how might we improve access to lifelong learning in Canada?